Welcome to TBonesBaseball.com here at Community America Ballpark. I'm Matt Folks, Director of Media Relations and T-Bones. And tonight we are celebrating Indeed. one of the best baseball, one of the best sports movies. Forget that, one of the best movies of all time. One of my favorites. <laughs> and it's hard to wait. This is David McGee Evans. He's our guest of honor here at Community America Ballpark tonight. If you're watching this on the website tonight on Friday, you still have time to come out here, catch part of the El Paso game, and then watch the movie with this guy, with the guy behind it after the game. Now, if you're watching this after Friday night, sorry you missed it, but you can still get the DVD. That said, yes. Uh, and, and if you watched the game out here tonight and saw us on the video board, but uh, what a great story. And, and, and just from the writing side of me, yeah. Yeah. just to come up with an idea and just to have all the little intricacies that you had in this movie, it's just, it's a remarkable film. Well, I appreciate that very much. It's, uh, look, you know, I don't know who it was that said it, but uh, was it maybe, it might have been Hemingway? Writing's easy. Just sit down and open a vein, right. you know? Exactly. And he's right. Uh, was right. And, uh, but this one, you know, I, look, yeah, I'm the guy that has his name on the title page, but I'm mean, really, we, we can't take too much credit for this sort of thing because when that kind of, when that kind of, I don't know, synergy happens with wherever it all comes from, it took, I don't know, a month maybe to write this. And uh, very, very few changes. Um, it just fit. It, you know, it was like a jigsaw puzzle that suddenly I knew where all of the pieces went. And it was just a matter of sitting down and putting them on the page, you know. Um, other things I've done have been, I, I, I have a thing I finished a, a year ago that took me 22 and a half years to finish. You know, just struggled too much with that one. This one was... Um, a month. About a month, yeah, six weeks tops uh, for all the rewrites and stuff like that. Of course, we did changes as we went along and right. stuff like that. But when it flows like that, you know it works, you know. And we didn't know if it was any good, but we knew it worked, you know. Well, but to imagine that we're going to be standing here 20 years later on a tour of 20, 25, 28 ballparks around the country, it's just amazing. Well, it's an, I, I, it, first of all, it's the greatest summer gig I ever had in my life, with the possible <laughs> exception of actually making the Sandlot. I get to travel the country. And one of the big reasons of, of several that I wanted to do this tour that I told Fox was, look, this movie, I think, is it, it's not just that it's well-liked. It means something to people. And I found out by meeting all of the fans and thanking them right back. Because, look, I, I would not be standing here with you if it wasn't for all of these, all of the people that love the movie. Yeah. So it was a big opportunity for me to, to, to return the gratitude. And to I wanted to know why. What's the deal? I mean, I, I get, I like the movie, you know, I, I know it's popular, I know it sells, I know it's a big deal. What is it? And this woman said to me, I think she was in Trent, New Jersey, she said four of her six kids with her, she says, I love this, so you always start like this, Mr. Evans, you don't understand. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, what do I not understand? And she says, it's the, this, my kids grew up with Benny and Smalls and the kids in their own home, Right. okay, and they would you know, they would stop the movie, have to go out and play like they were playing, come back in and start it again and all that. She says, the deal is, those characters that you created are forever, perennially, my kids' brothers, right? right? Uh, oh, you know, I was lumping the throat <laughs> time, so yeah. that's what I've come to understand. What was, uh, and I didn't realize, I was saying this before we started filming, that I didn't realize you guys shot it in the sand lot is in Salt Lake City. It is, yeah. We it was written to take place in the northeastern San Fernando Valley in Southern California, which is a desert ringed by um, purple mountains, the San Gregorios. And in '93, I mean, to this day, it costs you know, uh, I don't know, uh, the gross national product of small countries to shoot movies in Los Angeles. So we didn't have that kind of budget. We had to go someplace that sort of looked like that. Now I could have changed it and said, ah, it doesn't matter where it takes place. But no, I stuck with my guns because you know it meant something. The only other place in the northern hemisphere that <laughs> looks like that is the Salt Lake Valley. It has the Wasatch, which are purple mountains, in the middle of summer. And it's hot like L.A. in the summer, too. Huh. So, uh, yeah, it was about 110, 112 that summer. Yep, it was just crazy. And, uh, and all of the, the houses and the streets and stuff like that, it sort of got developed post-World War II with those 3 plus 2 ranch homes, you know, in the same way, the same time, the same kind of development, you know, streets with those oak trees and all that. It was a perfect match, you know, so that's why we shot it there. Well, as you think back to 20 some odd years ago filming this, what was maybe the most difficult thing of working with the kids and just overall watching this come together? Uh, time. Time is your enemy um, when you make a film. I started out with, I think, uh, like 58 days to make the movie, which is a lot of time to make a movie. 
and I got cut by a certain somebody that had something to do with the movie after it began down to 42 days. So that was that was very difficult. I mean, when you have kids that you can only shoot, you know, if you get them for six hours before the camera, and I mean, you're, you're lucky with labor laws and stuff like that. And you have animals, and these were um, uh, uh, English mastiffs, which, you know, weigh a couple of hundred pounds. They can walk four steps, and then they have to lay down and sleep. <laughs> and in 120 degrees, and they don't run. English mastiffs do not run, okay? They don't have to, because they're huge and scary. Uh -huh. So we had to find a, a skinny female, we had five of them, and we had to hose them down and keep them in a refrigerated wow. van and all this all the time. So with that, all that kind of pragmatic stuff was, uh, was difficult. Not a complaint, it's just what you have to do, you know? And of the thousand little decisions a, a day that are, the, the sum of which is making a movie, um, that was a pretty smooth shoot all in all. I mean, quite frankly, I had a great team, great production designer, genius production designer, genius director of photography, Chester Gazinski and, and Anthony Richmond. Great AD in Bill Elvin, terrific producer Kathleen Summers and Mark Berg. Uh, they, these people, what do you, all they used to ask me was, "What do you need? What do you want?" And I was, "Well, I need this and I want that," and they would get it for me. So it was the best filmmaking experience I, I ever had. Having said that, the biggest deal we had, we didn't have a tree. We had no tree, no no giant oak tree, <laughs> on that actual piece of land in Glendale, which is right inside Salt Lake City, Utah. Utah. It's empty. It's like two acres of nothing. Huh. And we said, well, we got to get a tree. So we had no money. We had, you know, the budget's nothing. And so where are we going to get a tree? And this is an, an example of the kind of kismet stuff that kept happening was, you know, Chester Kaczynski and I, the production designer, are sitting there just panicking like two weeks before. Going, what are we going to do? He goes, dude, we can't build when we got no money. Uh -huh. We can't go buy a specimen oak because it's going to be, you know, $250,000 for a 150-year-old oak tree. Right. What are we going to do? He goes, I don't know. The next morning, literally, he's driving to work down this street. He looks over, and there's a man outside his house, which is a very old house, probably 150 years old, maybe more. He's starting a chainsaw at 6 in the morning. Chester looks, he, he's standing near an oak tree, a giant oak tree. He goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to cut this tree down. He says, why? He goes, well, it was planted by one of the Mormon pioneers, and it's wrecking the foundation of my house finally. i got to cut it down. I don't want to, but i got to cut it down. Chester goes, can I have it? And the guy goes, yeah. He goes, I'll be back. We went and got two semis, a big crane, cut it down, took all the power lines and stuff for several miles, uh, you know, PG and all these guys, and trucked that thing to the sandlot and dumped it in 20 <laughs> cubic yards of cement. Treehouse. It was awesome. <laughs> Very cool. He is David Mickey Evans, and just, I, I know that's like trying to pick your favorite kid, but do you have a favorite line? out of the movie or favorite scene out of the movie? I do, I do. I mean, I love them all. I love, you know, I love the speech where uh, uh, the narrator's saying, you know, Michael Squinch Polidorus walked a little taller that day. You know, he kissed a woman. All that, I love all that stuff. I love, I love the end stuff. My favorite scene in the movie, though, is, is the scene that sort of wraps it all up. It's what the movie is about, and it's America. Friendship, courage, character, loyalty, and it's America, and it's the night fireworks scene. I mean, I remember typing, that scene when I was writing it up, their faces and describing them, and the last two words I made it up that I put, I said, you know, the, the fireworks go off and it's Aurora Americanalis, which is really what it is, you know, it, that is America. Little kids night, I mean, so that gives me goosebumps every time I see it. My favorite line is heroes get remembered but legends never die. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've, we use that upstairs, as a matter of fact, I've, I've used it, uh, uh, I got a signed baseball for my best man at my wedding, and I on the bottom of that we inscribed that. That's I mean, it just really? sticks with you. I did. Really? Did you owe me fifty bucks? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, my bad. Oh, and I'm very flattered. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really cool. He is David Mickey Evans, and you can go to uh, there's a website to. Oh, I got, yeah, go to my blog. It's okay. just my name, David Mickey Evans blog at blogspot.com. That's a doorway. You can email me, follow me on Twitter, all that happy stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm a little behind on my blog because, you know, okay. this driving in between events. Yeah. But you, there's at least 15 or 20, no maybe, no, maybe like 10 or so posts. And I post after every event. Well, I've okay. tried to. I'm behind. I'm going to catch up. There's also a ton of cool stuff about the Sandlot and all kinds of other junk on there. Um, and if you ever want to get a hold of me, just punch that email button and I answer all the emails. David Mickey Evans blog dot blogspot dot com. There you go. He is David Mickey Evans. I am Matt Folks. Thanks for watching. Get out here tonight, and if you've missed it, go buy the movie. Email him. Thanks for watching, everyone.